Welcome to um, the May 3rd select board meeting here in the town um, municipal office in here in the village of South Deerfield. Um, first item on the agenda is minutes. You know what? I, I haven't read the minutes. Did you have minutes? Yes, we have several awaiting being done. Um, uh, but Pat has prepared these. <clears throat> I haven't seen any either. I'm sorry, I didn't mail them to you. That's okay. Oh, no, that's well, okay. We, I just finished them. Yeah, we're just still getting over 10 minutes. Um, oh. do, you, do you want to put them off? Till yes, next week? Yeah. we can put them off. We'll hopefully have more for you to do next week also. Um, here's that okay, so pipeline yeah, uh, that's a letter. Is, that the pipeline? Is this oh. the pipeline letter you're looking for, Wendy, right here? No, I crafted one Our own. on a okay. one-page thing, and I guess I didn't see it. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no. I, no, I, I, I'm I didn't. thanking our technical uh, crew here. Thank you. Well... Um, there's quite a bit on it, actually. I know. I made it into one pager. Oh, thank you. But you don't know where it is. I just, I, I think I just did it and lost it. I was, I have five documents open at the same time. So oh. I'll redo it, and and if the board wishes, you can sign it at a later date. Well, next, Kip, you're this is next week. Yeah, you know what? We'll just do it next week. Isn't there a deadline, though? I thought there was some deadline. Uh, at the end of the month. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Then I'm not a record. Do you want to just it. describe for the listeners what it is? Or? Yeah. Um, the Massachusetts Association of uh, Boards of Health want us to sign on a letter to about the pipeline uh, or saying that pipelines are hazardous um, Frack gas is hazardous. This is no different than our position as a town that we voted and did. It's high risk gas infrastructure. Did you? It's all in your packet. Um, but it's a several page letter, and Wendy um, had crafted a much shorter one page letter, right? One mm -hmm. page? Yeah. yeah. I have to recraft it now. Well, I can do that quick. Yeah, and we can wait till next week. Again. Yeah, we'll just wait till next week. Um, all right. Kip, did you have any selectman announcements or? Oh, the one thing I for, uh, just wanted to mention. Do you see that email where from the um, school um, reimbursement authority? They have, we have more. We have a deviation of more than 10 percent. So they want to make sure that we have documentation that it was not a less or substandard roofing job. Did you? Want I, didn't, it? I didn't see that. You didn't see that. It, was this mm -hmm. from Alice Tony? Yeah. Um, it went to you. If you'd look at it, I can put it on the mm -hmm. on a future agenda. I think it came yeah, late, late this afternoon. Oh, so. I didn't. I didn't see it. And so. The state is saying that because we did the roof so cheap. We have greater than 10% deviation. <laughs> it's because so, the people who estimated it were looking to make more money. So they need us was, to put it on an agenda. I said at your direction I would do that. So we'll sure. take a look at it and let me know. Can we just do it for next for next yeah. Wednesday? One, one of the biggest things I that just want to make sure we respond so can we get our payment because what they're doing is holding up the payment. You're kidding. No, yeah. it's well, they just made a big payment. Yeah, but just part of final <clears throat> part of that overall dollar amount, there was I think two hundred twenty thousand dollars in what they labeled contingencies for things that they would find and have to pay, and we didn't use a penny of it. I know, so, I know. but they tried. I know they, they tried hard. But yeah. I was there with you. Yes. Okay, it was a pain in the butt. Okay. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to bring up, <clears throat> I was reminded that. And at the um, last insurance meeting that we had here, at the end the of the month, insurance. health insurance, mm -hmm. that there was a request of all the subscribers yes. that the select boards vote to adopt section yeah. 21-22 of the Mass General Law right. 32B by July, so they could uh, plan on making changes to the health plans mm -hmm. in the future. Barbara sent that to me today. I'm going to digest it and um, okay. have a letter for you to sign. I, okay. I wanted oh, Wendy. Well, well, actually, we have to notify the employees. Right. Yeah. But and I wanted like Wendy that, so. to to look at it a little bit more. Sure. So, 
we can put it on the agenda for like next week or the week after. You have to look. I don't. And I think I, I just wanted to make sure it was well, okay. I'll just make sure I follow all the protocols. Yeah, because it's a whole sure. very well-defined statutory scheme for how you notify when and in relation to the board, to board vote. So I want to just make sure that. And I just saw it this and afternoon. Right? From so my understanding, it's not necessarily that they're going to change anything. But I guess it's it allows part that of this opportunity. allows the opportunity to have the discussion. So we have to move. Forward. Okay. And it's uh, really the contractual employees. <clears throat> Statute references, not the uh, non-contractual employees. But I think we'll notify everybody. I'll I'll have to read it. I got it. I saw it late, and I said, okay. "Let me digest this." Okay. But I, I understand what it's about. I've been I've familiarized with that. So. Carol, I have a question for you. Yeah. Who? Who owns Frontier School? Is it all four towns? I believe it's Union 38, yeah. Union 38. Um, you the, think it's uh, under the uh, supervised yeah. superintendency union? Because we don't have authority for that building. Cause, you mean the property? Oh, I don't know, actually. the You mean the land? No, the building itself. I guess what where I was going with this is that, uh, <clears throat> you know, Last fall, I, I heard that they were looking for several hundred thousand dollars to do a, a new roof on that school, and and I went and stuck my nose in and, and you know mm -hmm. told them that they didn't need a roof, and and so they finally figured out that they didn't need a roof, but they do need you know to deal with some other issues, and I and I got an email or something, and, and a dollar amount is pretty outrageous, and you know I haven't been involved with that, but I, I've been seeing so much things that they're just like they throw money at. That I was want to take it upon myself to speak to, go to other select board meetings of the four towns and propose that we have a building committee made up of people who understand construction, not necessarily the school committees. Actually, you know what? That's a really that might be a very helpful idea. And, and if, if all four towns are involved, then I, I think that it would take a load off of the frontier. You know the administration there, who you know they admittedly don't understand. So they're when they do have issues, they run to the state looking for money and advice and stuff. And it it's a very expensive way, know. you know. So um, I'm pretty sure that it's through the union agreement. None none of us own it individually because okay. that's one of the problems. Uh, having uh, that is a designated shelter site, we don't control that building. Okay. Do you, you mean the su why wouldn't it be under the school district as well, opposed to the superintendency union? You mean oh. the Frontier yeah. Regional School, school district. district? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you yeah. have any problems with me reaching out to the oh, other no, select no, no. board? No, I think it's an excellent okay. idea because just, um, just to talk to about it. No, I think it's wonderful, and we. I, it would be also, I think, uh, you know, one of the ideas for the finance committee was to set up some kind of subcommittee that would work with the school. So having a a building committee makes sense too. So, we Have you talked to Bob Decker about this. No, no. I, 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 I just got this email and I was reading right. about what they wanted to do. And you know, I, I don't. I'm not saying that it's not correct, but given what I went through with the roof, I'm like, well, yeah. I, I'd really like to look well, at this. He was just reelected, and I, I was thinking, he, right? He would be. A, a, yeah, uh, I, I mean, Bob had. He's a font first. of information. Yeah. So. Sure. Uh, yeah, reach out to him and then uh, organize it because okay. I, I think it's a wonderful and I, okay. idea. I okay. mean, uh, I mean that's one of the things we were talking about is from a budget point of view too. Remember yeah. setting up a subcommittee of yeah. our finance co of the town finance committees yeah. and and work with the schools on the budget. Didn't you have that? I remember when I worked in Sunderland years ago. I tried to. It was years and years and years ago. It's called municipal advisory committee. They've had it at Mohawk for years, and I thought. We had it here. So not in the recent history. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, years and years ago, when I first was a selectman, we had we were had sort of an active committee mm -hmm. because this is when we went after poor Stan Rosenberg. You know, when the state was cutting money, and you know that was when Mitt Romney was governor and all that kind of stuff. And you know, we that went was a long after. Time ago. I know. I know. But anyway, I'll I've been to, around a lot. Okay. Like, I'll add that to my list. Well, I've been around too, but <laughs> it's not sitting here. But so anyway, we had an active four-town committee. So it, I think having an active four-town finance committee that is part of the budgetary process and a four-town building committee, I mean, that makes total right. sense because 
It gives everybody a heads up, yeah. but also it shares the workload. I have one in, Am in Amherst Regional School of Library in Pelham Shootsbury in Amherst. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's a wonderful Mohawks idea. had one for years, and I recall there being one, reading back in the paper years yeah. ago. Um, and I think I suggested that when I was working in Sunderland 20 plus years ago. 20 yeah, years well, ago. I was going to say it's been a while, but. Um, and typically it's a, a member of the Finance Committee, it's a representative from the Select Board, and more people can go, but there are people designated. and. Town well, administrators, though, and it's to jointly work with the schools on developing the, the regional budget. If what I would, what I was thinking, what I'd like to propose to the other towns is to see if they can find volunteers in their community who are in the construction related construction related fields, uh, because it's fine to have another subcommittee. Oh, th this but is a you, different thing right. from the municipal well, advisory committee. Right. But if you don't have people with the knowledge and background, you're going to be in the same boat you're in now. You know, I, so. I know. So I think it would be wonderful. So reach out and see what you can do for the okay. building committee. And then um, okay. if you, when you're talking to them, can you talk about the finance kind of thing too? Yeah. I'll talk yeah. about it. With t I'm going to see the other town administrators and school administrators next week. And I will um, yeah, scope I mean, that out and let you know. It isn't that I don't want to. I just don't want to blur the line. Right. Because I don't want to blur the line of, you know, the school finances of running the school, the books, oh, no, the teachers. No, no, no. I, 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 I don't want to get involved with that. It's just, it's just the building portion of when they need, you know, major repairs or have major problems. Uh, instead of, I think a lot of this falls on the shoulders of uh, Mr. Lesko, and that, you know, it leaves him in a, in a curious but, spot that he has to go out and find. Oh, I agree you know, 100%. Something. We saw that this summer. And, okay. uh, but it seemed like, you know, um, if the finance committee had a little bit more preparation with us and worked with the school committee a little bit more then we wouldn't have such uh, you know but I, I hear yeah. what he's saying two separate yeah. things this is two sort of a it is building two advisory thing. committee of right. expert yes. contractors yes. and others in the field sure. who could be um, a, a um, what's the word I want sort of you know it's advisory but I, it's a right. resource uh, right. it's a resource specific for, for the school know, yep uh, I can't yeah. think of the word I want. This is terrible. <laughs> but at any rate, a good resource. It's been a long day. Advisory committee. And, um, but again, I, I think protocol-wise, it would probably be good to talk with someone like Bob first. Uh, I just think he'd be good. Bob Decker. You know, he's on the school oh, yeah, committee. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, sure. and you, you know him. Yep. Um, okay. I, uh, and then next yeah. fall, we can, or we can start laying the groundwork. But if we're going to have this fiscal group of, of towns working together in the district with the school um, we can start talking about that now but start meeting in the fall yeah uh, oh yeah I don't I, no intention I mean um, I guess the only thing this is really a selectman's now uh, comments uh, Wendy and I went to a meeting this morning um, just to let you know what we we're thinking of doing um, it was on this new program from the state community resi resilience and um, you know we've been working six years on this already so and I'm chair of that committee so I'm not you know I wasn't I wasn't even gonna go but Wendy convinced me to go because I saw I know if you get designated you are I know able to access grant funds so including culvert programs so like that. we <laughs> turned out the lady was really really nice from the state and um, so we're gonna apply for our certification I'll, I'm going to draft something up, and then Wendy's going to schmooze we'll it. We'll come back to a future. And, and with the, the caveat that we want money to upgrade our hazardous mitigation plan to include the climate part that we know we already don't have because the data hasn't even been generated yet from the UMass, or they're still working on it or whatever. But um, I, what I wanted to do was leverage this for the culvert on Mill Village because I think if we get the certification, that will give us, uh, get, bump us up in priority. For and and we need to get that done because I'm I'm really worried about that. That's it, it can't go for not much longer. And what are we waiting for? Just permits or money? Oh, money. Um, it's going to cost to get put an open bottom culvert in there. It's probably over a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, but Tim Corey is running and and. Kevin has already got him out there, and we're at, but the problem is we're at the bottom of the list because the land, land because of the landslide came down and silted in all that wetlands behind Williams's sugar house, 
And then um, DA is playing fields across the street, and they maintain them, you know, with all their, you know, sprays and stuff. And so it's a dead zone. If you ask Natural Heritage, there's all kinds of stuff there. But Tim Corey went and looked, and there's not much there. So it, it goes on the bottom of the list. And so what we want to do, other than dropping a few salamanders around, is get on, bump us up. And this, this program will bump us up, I think, hmm. on that list. Because we are on the list. Kevin got us on the list. But we're, we're at the, more at the bottom, and, and the money will get sucked up. So I, I think it's worth, I just wanted you to know what we were thinking of doing. And I think it's worth doing. And we'll, we'll talk about it next week, because I haven't had a chance. I mean, I went out and worked in my garden, because my garden is a, a wreck. So I didn't, I didn't do it. I, I should have such problems. I, you know, so I didn't do <laughs> any of this stuff okay. today. But if right. you're going to the meeting, we're going to do this for All next right. week, OK? Sure. Next. All right. Um, we have um, town administrator's report. When do you yeah, want to go over that? I, saw it. <laughs> I didn't read it, but I saw it. Okay. Um, so the first part is just talking about what a whirlwind it has been since I started um, three months ago. Mostly just bringing things back up to speed, uh, filling in the gaps on things that had been left, um, and um, moving things forward, uh, such as the comp plan um, and working to get town meeting set to go and we went and we were over and yay <laughs> so went well uh, and then I I felt it went Thank very you. well um, and who knew how it was going to go and whether we would do, accomplish it in one evening so that felt good um, we should thank Dan for uh, yes. oh, he put a lot of work thanked. into it so um, thank you Dan so uh, just this is not at all inclusive but just giving an overview of the bigger projects that are ongoing on um, the natural bakers today speaking of bakers Charlie Baker, our governor, has just filed the legislation today. And that's in your packet. You've got a copy, yeah. How come it um, took so long? I don't know. Um, I mean, this was back in November. Yeah. Um, so. The back of the blue one? So that's been filed, and hopefully we can, um, between uh, Representative Kulik and Senator Rosenberg, get that moving quickly were they are they made are they aware that yes this, they are okay it was sent to everybody um it just at six o'clock i got this so i've been in touch with them all along um and related to that i also heard from new england natural bakers today you signed their uh, expedited permit back in t may 6 2015 and they sent it saying we need to get this renewed i see nothing on the permit in our bylaws or in the statute that we requires that, but I sent it off to council today saying, do, do we, we need, need to, to do, do this? this? If so, okay. I will bring that before you. Um, and they are, um, you know, awaiting Anxious, I know. security on our end in order for them to proceed and reapply for the financing they had applied for before. But um, so that's where things are at with that. Okay. Can you just let them know that this got done? Yep. I mean, yeah, I did. OK. Yep. Um, the church. Um, Dick and I did a, with, um, I was going to say his name, the wiring inspector yesterday, uh, a real serious walkthrough of the church, the basement, the upstairs, uh, and the uh, main level. And he's writing up a um, report on the building. And um, what it seemed to us at first look was the uh, old electrical system is you know outdated out of what uh, tube and whatever it's called knob and tube knob and tube um and um that needs to be done first before you can do any of the insulation or anything and then uh last night there were the um energy committees had a it wasn't energy committees but it was a big meeting on energy and uh, renewable energy here and ma sweetland was here and came up to me and said you know you could use green communities money to do uh the insulation. energy improvements work in that building. So yep. that was nice. Because that's pretty good. That. Yep. So um, I have, oh, um, Carolyn was here when I, we spoke, uh, I spoke with council about what's the next step. We do have documents, a deed and um, purchase and sale, or not a whatever the other document is. 
ready to go, but that she noticed there was slight language discrepancy. The council, as we were talking about it with her yesterday, she's going to just uh, fix that, or it, if she needs to speak to other camp, church council about that, I don't think so. I think she's just, you know, fixing that. Bring that back to you. I wanted Carolyn so we could both hear what, how she was describing our obligation, what we could and couldn't do, what the restrictions were, and what it, what it meant, and what I gathered from that conversation is, it's pretty open. Could, the only thing we really we can't do is sell it. Right. So um, we but have I, no I'll intention. I'll clarify that with so. her when we get the finalized yep. documents. Good. We'll bring that back before the board, and then we'll figure out how we go from there. Um, so these are just the ongoing project personnel policy. That, as you know, the personnel board is meeting Monday, and they're going to be taking this up. This is something that's been in the works for um, six, seven years or so, and the, the point being that we move to a policy rather than a bylaw. And so we have a living document that needs to get, can be updated and changed without having to wait a year for town meeting to change a bylaw. And this is just the way to do it. And the laws change all the time. So. Um, and um, also we will continue the work on the compensation plan as discussed with the, with the finance committee and this board, your, your board. Um, plan to continue, I will work as ne needed with the, uh, the sewer study committee and, and uh, DPW and you um, as we work forward on um, what we need to do to address the upgrades needed with the plants and the sewer system. Mm -hmm. And I've got a number of things to do as a follow-up to town meeting. We have to get a building inspection fee schedule in place because we deleted that section of the bylaws. Um, uh, remind the school pledge nonprofits of their responsibilities and keep keep that going through the accountant's office. Um, whatever I need to do with the building process with the SCEMS. Um, Sending the resolution on health care to the representative and senator. So, uh, and I'll answer any questions about the ongoing. Those are the biggest things. There's, you know, so as okay. you know, a lot of other things going on. Um, and so, the new plans. I'm looking at this is really my beginning because I felt like what I've been doing up to here was just trying catch to just up, catch everything up that needed yep. to be caught up, and working toward getting a town meeting and a budget together. So um, what I'm planning to do is to create a, a fiscal year plan, a timetable for how we go about preparing the budget and the role of the board, my office accountant, and this finance committee and the capital improvement plan committee. And um, they're meeting on the, 20, the finance committee's meeting on the 24th and capital improvement is meeting next week, I think. I'm yep. not sure right now, um, but we have that on the schedule. Um, I would want I want to create a safety committee. It's a long time recommendation of insurance companies to have that, uh, on our, um, and um, it will save us some money on our insurance and we'll address issues as needed. Um, uh, I sent out. I don't know if you saw it, Kip, Carol, I, or I Carolyn, did. and uh, Trevor was here earlier. He read through it. Um, uh, proposed um, the job description. The, and the ad and a timetable for hiring the executive assistant. Um, is there any s state requirement to when you post that job that the educational requirement has to be met other than it being in the job description? No, it's just, it's our decision locally. Now that job is classified at grade four, I believe. So the education uh, requirement in that meets what the grade four requirement is in there are um, I guess manual. not I'm not against education but I, I through my years I've known a lot of people who do that type of work never went to college mm -hmm. you know and for whatever reason it it just clicked with them they mm -hmm. were you know brilliant people they 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 remembered things they were organized and skilled and stuff mm -hmm. and I'd hate to see anybody overlooked because they don't have okay. two years of college. Well, my plan is to take the first look on my own at the applications as they come in, and I'll certainly take a look at anybody, regardless of their, um, their <laughs> education, to see their experience and whatever. In, in that job description, when I read it, it said, you know, the education, could the words and or be put in there 
And so it wasn't, because somebody reading that, if they saw that, they'd say, well, I don't have any college education, so I'm not even going to bother applying. So therefore, you'd never get the opportunity to see that. I found in doing many, many hiring searches that doesn't stop people. Okay. And I also would prefer to have somebody who's got the kind of skill level you get from having a college degree. But I will certainly consider someone who's clearly by the letter. To me, the cover letter is often very instructive about whether that person is going to be able to be the right person to do that job. I just want to Not make sure. Not in terms of what they say, but social they spell media and stuff. How they, yeah. You know, compose a letter. Yeah. So um, certainly look at someone. I, will cons I would certainly consider that. Haven't figured out yet how we'll do the process and who will be on a screening committee. And we can talk further about that. And Pat and I are in conversation about that as well. Um, but um, I'm hoping that we can move this along <laughs> finally. And I'm glad, as I've said to other people, you know, as much as we've needed another person in that office to help with the load, workload, the, the amount of time that goes into the process of hiring someone just wasn't there. And also, the, I've come to realize that the longer I waited, the better idea I think we all have gotten of what we need, not just in the office, but you know, fitting into the town hall and the needs of the administration. I just want office. someone to be able to handle the social media stuff. Mm -hmm. That's really important. You think it's that big of a deal? What? You yes. think it's that big of a deal? I, I do, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Someone has got to be on top of that. You always have to be on. You have. We have to. If if there's a, a vacuum of information, it will be filled with misinformation. You always need to be ahead of the curve. And, well, our, and that like our and town meeting wasn't on the website, was it? Yeah. It was. What do you mean on the, the town meeting? It didn't. The say, announcement of yeah, it if was, you open up the and website. the warrant was. It, I saw yeah, the did warrant. Did you post the warrant? Yeah. Yeah. And the announcement was on the front page. That something happened to the website. A year or two ago, or whatever, when you when they transferred from one company to another, or they changed the format. Oh, it and just it hasn't been. And, yeah, and they're just this. We've been understaffed. You were on there, in there alone for a while. Just need to really focus yeah. on that. And um, so that's that will be. Okay. Important. So. Uh, it right. will save us so much time if everything is on the website as right. well. And the goal is, if you look at other communities, to get everything up there and send people there when they want information. Right. It, it's, it, it, cuts will, down it will be helpful to us internally as well to have information we know. Well, it's at least it's on the website. So just start putting everything, everything minutes, agendas, everything, um, and, and old information, studies. Um, all kinds of things, and anything, because it's all pretty much, other than personnel records, Everything is pretty much public information, and that's and if under it's the open all meeting on, law. We're supposed right. to send people there to get their information, right? And, and requested information, and all that stuff is on there. It's on there forever, right? I mean, it's and it's available, so we don't have to spend time. We could even put handing the, it out. We to could people. put these meetings. Well, the, the, the hazardous mitigation, the hazardous them. mitigation plan. If it was on there, we could have looked it up today right. and found out how many years left we have on it, right. instead of like guesstimating. So. I mean, that, for we put up our, all our fee schedules and know, application know, forms. It's, it it really should be a virtual town hall. That's why they call it. Well, and it would cut down. It, it would cut down on the piles of paper that you end up taking home. Well, we have to make it as. I feel it's not very user friendly right now. I myself it isn't. will go on it and say, "Wait, I was just here." Yeah, well, it isn't. So I, I I would like actually someone who's completely new to things to look at it and go, "Well." Where, where would I look, you know? But so, being that other person. So, at any rate, we'll we'll move forward on that. Um, um, so, new plans: the fiscal plan of the safety committee, hiring executive recommending. Um, I'm recommending, and we'll we'll talk more about this in the near future. That you appoint a bylaw review committee mm -hmm. to update the general bylaws of the town, such as we did with the CIPC and the building one at this town meeting. I think at every town meeting you're band-aiding the bylaws. They're, they're, in, they're really out of date, and um, there were things in there that should not be and things that aren't there that should. So um, I've already asked Bruce St. Peter's whether he would do work on I think you would be a fine he chair on that. Be interested in, so, yep. um, so this is not zoning or personnel. It's simply those general bylaws, yep. all those other things. And we look at other communities for examples of things. Um, 
and do some outreach around that. Um, okay, uh, remember a while back we talked about, uh, we had some resources from the FERCOG with just DLTA monies and you wanted to focus on economic development. I met with Jessica Atwood. Uh, she, um, after they reviewed what we asked for, she submitted some options. I met with her on those. Then Trevor and I talked about them and um, I'm gonna, we're gonna bring that back to the board for further discussion, kind of focusing on what we can do. And I have people walking in my office every couple of weeks who own property or live there or don't live there but own property so, and are interested in improving Elm Street in particular. I have a seeds and eads meeting tomorrow so with Jessica. So is this gonna be part of the plan? Did you have? I don't some? even know what seeds and ease. Oh, the it has to do with the sure. comprehensive, comprehensive economic, economic development. That's a ten-year plan. Yeah, the, no, it's five-year. Okay, uh, Brian, you can chat. With well, her. I'm I'm just going to make sure that we have a spot then for that. We we have the DLTA money for that, but have the chat with her and see where that. Yeah, goes. I will make sure that she holds a spot for us because I mean I go to those don't yeah, meetings. Yeah, we're anyway. all, we're set with them, and uh, Trevor and I'll come back and talk before we go forward. Okay, so I'll, I'll make sure that they have a slot for us then or something in there. Because I, I want, I, we jumped through all the hoops for the green, I mean for the streetscape, complete streets. Complete pro streets. So we should be eligible for something. Well, I, they need to get me, I've been I asking know, to get the I know. training so I can get into uh, the right. portal and we can apply for grant money. So. I, I go, so I'm a, so the, the quorum, there's a quorum, so I will make sure Jessica yeah, works Yeah, just say I've this. been waiting to get yeah, the okay. thing going. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I've, I've said this many times, but one of the things I think is very important to keep in mind is that any improvements that you want to see in our downtown area, you, the landowners, I'm sure would like to improve their property, but the first thing that happens after they spend money to improve their property, they're penalized with a higher tax rate. I think any conversation has to think of somehow that that doesn't happen. You know? Well, I think we're talking about like, I, I mean, we need to do sidewalks. Sidewalks no. shouldn't give them. No, no sidewalks. Won't, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just that we should be doing more and and working as partners with the business community. Yeah, and, 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 and obviously we okay. would I can start. Read some of the things that we're looking at doing. Do you, would you like to hear this now? Sure. Or, um, so she gave us these five. Each was worth, cost about $5,000, and Trevor and I looked through them. And I kind of wanted a combination of two, but this is a downtown commercial center promotion, it's called. Um, create interview questions, identify key stakeholders who could contribute to commercial activity revitalization in center. Identify and interview key st stakeholders who could contribute to center revitalization. Um, uh, YCC, I'm trying to think of what that is. Um, Yankee Candle, Deerfield Academy, Berkshire Breweries, Realtors, the Franklin County CDC, obviously landlords. I, you know, as again, I've had several people in buildings who don't live in town they were, who are interested actually in improving and seeing, um, and they'd be willing to to make an investment if um, the town makes one. One person wanted trees, another said sidewalks. Well, that's why I say some of that so complete street it's a, it's stuff. It's yeah. put things to, together. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I've heard what you said, so about, um, I mean, the I think, upside and downside of that. I mean, I, I'm, I have nothing against trees, but like everything in life, they have a place. I mean, you go, yeah. I don't know how many years it's been now, but if you go down through the center of Turner's Falls, they planted all these trees. And, you can't see what business is there at all. All you see is these trees and, you know, there's brick yeah, buildings above them. And yeah, but they weren't pruned correctly. Well, I, I, what I'm just saying. And so then when you plant trees, then you wreck the sidewalks as they grow because they break the sidewalks, they break the curbings. And, you know, so there's a lot of issues with things like that, too, you know. This, um, just this few days ago, this woman was in who owns yeah. property, and she was asking me about trees. She lives in another town, but she owns property on Elm Street. And I took her over to see the map that Kevin has posted. And there are many trees there, and I suspect, you know, we'll look into this further, but I suspect it's because of sidewalk issues and close to the street issues. Sure. And there's yep. just this, a limited there's amount of- There's not much you But can there's do. other things you can do. Yep. So I'll just quickly go through this. Um, prepare for and conduct a focus group and or targeted survey on commercial activity in the center with building owners, businesses, residents, and key stakeholders. Create a draft summary of findings. 
if appropriate, conduct a tour of vacant properties for business development entities and commercial realtors, and create final report. Sure. So, um, you know, it's a way to get sort of things yes. sure. moving. Um, I'm hoping to very soon, and I've already talked to the Energy Committee about this, restarting the solar installation project at the landfill. Okay. We do have some money st still available to work with uh, Greenblatt, who drafted the RFP previously, so we take another look at that and see if we can. Yeah, we definitely it. want to do that. Um, disposing, we've got some um, surplus town land uh, who was asking me about that. Moving forward on getting rid of, um, if you choose, um, additional real estate mm -hmm. that the town owns. We want to put that into an RFP. I don't remember who told me this. Uh, maybe it was, it might have been, um, it doesn't matter. At any rate, that was there a policy decision to make, to, uh, to only sell like three at a time or something? Well. Do you recall <laughs> that? <laughs> Given the fact that we seem to have so many issues going through the process, right. we, we only did a couple. Right. But so. I think we, the idea was to do it as much as possible, as soon as possible. And we and also uh, surplus equipment. We've got some old cruisers at the at the highway garage, and see what else there is out there, and do get rid of some surplus real and uh, property and equipment. Um, this is a fancy way of saying get myself better organized, but implement and utilize new systems for file management and organization of town records and documents. We're going to be purchasing this, and Pat could talk more about this if you're interested. Um, and both uh, our office and the clerk's office is very interested in this King software system, which is a whole records management system. If you want to say more about that, or is that enough for now? Happy to t tell you more about that. Um, um, I would like to do more to upgrade our, our human resources, personnel processes. Um, we need to formalize a consistent hiring procedure and get the personnel records up to snuff and implement an, um, I, I refer to it as an employee goal setting and evaluation process. Um, and that is, I know, something you're interested in. Um, and lastly, for now, I'm working to identify opportunities to maintain and enhance our services in the most cost effective way possible. Well, so, so put on the agenda next week that Lincoln Land Institute. Carolyn, and when is that conversation? Do you have that? Um, well, the woman the is supposed to call me back at 2 o'clock on Monday. Yeah, and so I actually thought it was a really good idea for to be down here and have her call here. But I think we're not ready to commit yet. Oh, we were going to just get more information. Well, she's supposed to let me know on Monday whether we got $7,500 um, scholarship or $10,000 scholarship, and then how much scholarship on the second phase. And All right. Do you want to describe it more for Kip? And well, no, we'll just talk about it next week, other than to say, because this is a long, convoluted yep. thing. That's I got nominated to do because of community because you like committees. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's she through the crew. She's nominated because they recognized the work that she's been doing to this um, leadership development program and could invite other, other, two other town officials, I believe, as a three. team. Three. Three other to go. But it's extensive. I, and it's a, an excellent program, um, uh, but it's, it's timely. It takes time, and it's in Cambridge. So um, we need to know more details and costs and who would be appropriate if. Okay. Well, and, and the whole idea is how do you deliver? How do you think out? It's thinking out of the box. How do you how do you deliver municipal services in um, in a way that um, continues the services but generates different options and saves money? And I mean, there's all kinds of. It's really good because it. I mean, the, the pot problem is there's just less money and people want more services. So this is sort of how do you do this? How do you, how do you be creative? And how do you think out of the box and get everybody thinking out of the box? And um, well, work depending within on the services, you could charge a fee for the services so the people who demand it more often will pay more for it. But anyway. He always thinks that's out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> 
What box? I mean, what, what boxes? No. No. Well, I mean, I, I mean, that's. I always, yeah. I'm always hustling money and hustling things. So this seemed like a way, but there is a there is an expense and there is a commitment of time and supposedly there is a scholarship and it's available and I don't scholarship know. to who for who for the for team. us the team uh, so they'll pay you to go here they'll pay the fee to oh, participate no, okay. it's it's four weekend it's friday saturday friday saturday for it's september october um, is it November? Or, I don't no, no, it's January is the last one. Oh, Next. really? Yeah. Uh -huh. So anyway, it's four. So it's eight days, and then they all, then their consultants come and they work with the town. Um, if it was in Florida, I'd, I'd volunteer, but I'm not no, going to go to Cambridge. No, it's Cambridge. So, no, it's working. I mean, okay. it's real work, and it will have to, you know, pretend to be smart. <laughs> So okay. anyway, next. Okay. Any, I just um, what I hope to do um, for either, if, within very short order is um, bring this fiscal year plan timetable for you to you um, and the finance committee. Well, to you primarily to for your review and endorsement. Then I can bring the finance committee. We really need to sort out the role that your that we all play in the process and the timing of that. There, are, there is not a, um, unanimity of thought on that, and I want to propose something and work with it so we don't have issues arise over who's doing what. As far as what? I mean. Finance committee and select board in the budget process huh. in particular. Uh, the idea is to have us review it first and then send it to the finance committee after we've um, reviewed it. We didn't, we didn't do that this year because... Poor Wendy was just. No, it was before I was here. I know. <laughs> yeah, they well, already started it, working on it. It before. should. We should. Now that I've gone through it once, we should get it by the end of the year, and I also think that we should sit down with the finance committee to go over it instead of say we're going to talk about the police budget instead of having John come to the selectmen and then go to the finance committee when we have a particular department where all of us should be there. So they're not asking the same questions three or four times, and that way we can all put our two cents in. Well, I, I, let me propose something. Yeah, because I, I was just going to say part of it is we, we need to have a first. I mean, it's our budget, so we need to look at it first. And then, then we could sit down with the Finance Committee. Okay. But, I mean, but like you were talking about different ideas that you had. We had no chance to have that discussion. And that was why it's important for us to have, to meet with the department heads and go through the budgets ourselves first. But don't you really think that was our fault this past year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It definitely so. was. We had no staff. <laughs> when are we going to do this? <laughs> so the idea is to get ahead of this and have it, you know, okay. sometime right. before the end of the year. Okay. And then we pass it to the yeah, I'll, I'll finance I'll have something committee. for you to yeah. look at and... Oh, no, I'm not saying it's not a criticism of anybody. We just no, have no, no staff. I, I, I know, no one but here. It, 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 I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Listen. We learned. We we'll didn't go, go to jail. We didn't go to jail, and stuff more or less got done. So, come that, on. That's not your goal. Please tell me that's not your goal. <laughs> I'm happy I didn't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, listen, there was no one here. Come on. So poor, that, poor Pat held it together. Um, okay. Okay. That's <clears throat> my report. All right. A liquor license for the Franklin Land Trust? They have their um, fundraising D2, R2 um, uh, road race. Do we, this, we've, do we have that in here? Or? Yeah. That just We usually waive the fee and vote to do that. Um, it's, they do this every year. Um, it's up at, in the South Meadows. Yep. Do we have a particular... Request in this book for that. This for that looks one like this. Oh, here's. Oh no, one. it's in the letter. We have the paperwork, but there's their logo. It's the, the red, red file logo. is oh, your red, red items, file. and the blue file is just. I, for I your, just found for the minutes. I found the a meeting. File. I'm sorry. Because those are the action items related to the agenda. Yeah. The blue file is just mail for your own 
What do we get a check for $40,000 for? We're wonderful. To the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> Maybe we are going to some vote. I think that's been in there for a while. Oh, here it is. Kip, do you have it? Here it is. You can make a, you can make a okay. motion. Um, okay, I make a motion that we approve the one-day liquor license for the Franklin Land Trust on August 18th. 18th, uh, 2017. And waive the fee. And we're going to waive the fee. Um, I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Um, Can I just say something related sure. to that? Um, sure. They will be coming in in a couple of weeks because they're uh, seeking a conservation restriction for land off Stillwater Road that, that they're going to be um, managing some land that's being donated to the fire district. Yes. And so they're going to tell you all about that. They will, and the fire district, I think, will be here as well. So it's okay. scheduled on, for your meeting on the 17th. Just, it's unrelated to their fundraising. Um, um, I heard that the, they had a donation for the fire district, so that was wonderful. So it's good it's for, for the water support. Land preservation and yep. water, water protection. Yep. Okay, um, discuss, discussion item is, is a review of the sewer entrance, I mean, sewer entrance fee. Yes, um, this came up, and I'm just checking. Uh, we've discussed whether this uh, vote that you took in 2015, you want to stick with this? Um, well, I, I think the um, sewer committee should, should review it. I want to stick with it for now. Well, it's really in your ballpark, and I but, think what I heard um, at sewer committee meetings is they want you to make those decisions. Oh, well, then yeah. let's just keep it until we know, until we have a chance to look at more, um, you I know, more what, information down the line. Why this came up is that we were hearing from um, the Sugarloaf Estates, uh, from uh, Mark, about his project. Um, yeah, I, I think that this is... I think the total fees we're estimating for that would be $154,000. I, I think this is totally different, though. I, I think what this applies to is um, there's a building lot for sale on North Main Street. If you buy that building lot and you want to connect to that sewer that's there, you would pay this uh, $3,300 well, based for, on 300 That's an example. It's really of a three-bedroom It's house. based on bedrooms. So it would be 2200 for a two-bedroom two unit. When we, a couple years ago, uh, well, three, three years or four years ago, we, we went down to the MMA conference where they had all the people, you know, their engineers sure. and stuff. And so we went and approached them for free. They gave us advice, and we took, compiled their advice and came up with that. And that was basically what is happening across the state and... So I, I don't really want to mess with it until we, um, till the sewer committee has come. I mean, I, I feel like it, once we have an idea of what we're doing with our sewer plants, yep. then we can ha charge more for the hookup fees. But I kind of don't want to reduce or increase the fees. I mean, they've been in place for a couple of years, and I w don't want to mess with them until we know what we're really going to do with the sewer plants. So this because is the, the actual fee. This is an example of sure. the three-bedroom house. And so this would be based the right. two, on and, the two-bedroom. And, and I agree with what you said. I, I think this is fine until we you know, decide what we're going to do. But also going forward with what um, Wendy had mentioned about the new uh, condominium project, this is a different, this is not apples for apples. They're looking for a sewer connection to the sewer lines. They're not, you know, and the conversation I've heard is that you're going to charge them for all of this, but technically it's their sewer line until the town accepts it. So there should be a fee associated with connecting a sewer main to a sewer main. Well, I mean, if he wants to pay it all up front, that's fine. But I, I think it would be kind of onerous to have it paid up front. He should... You know, as he builds the units, he can just pay for, as the units are hooked up, rather than charge right. them up front but for a total build out. And I, maybe I'm not explaining myself. Oh, oh no, you the, are. But I'm the, not going to. I'm not going to lower the rate. I'm not in favor of lowering the rate just because he's hooking up one pipe. 
I'm not necessarily saying lower the rate. I'm just saying that this type of a fee is based on the fact that the town paid for this sewer line. And now if you want to connect to our sewer line, you have to pay us so much per bedroom. And in this particular case, it's $3,300. But, but, in the but that is in fact true though, Kip, because he's putting, but he's putting 70, in the sewer. Units, 70 units into our sewer. So whether he pays it up front or as he builds out, I, it doesn't matter to me. I think it's kind of onerous to pay it up front, but he's still connecting to our sewer system 70 units with two bedrooms in each one. And so I, I'm, I, the fee, we set this up. We went okay. and spent a lot of time coming up with this fee structure. So I don't want to mess with it until we find out what we're doing with our sewer plant because the what people are going to hook up with should reflect what we're actually having to incur for costs. I understand that. <clears throat> but I think what what you might be missing is that same thing with the water. The water department charges $3,000 for a water connection. When you go to the water department, there's a water main that comes down the side of the road. And here's your property line. When you pay the water department $3,000, they put a connection and they run it to your property line. And then you connect here and you go there. Same thing with the sewer. The sewer pipe is there. You pay Kevin, you know, or the, the town for that sewer connection. They put this pipe in and they come over here to the property line and you connect to this. In this case, none of this exists. The town's not going to put this in. No, I understand this, but it's still based on bedrooms. But... So the bedrooms are impacting our sewer treatment plant. And so the connection fee is to um, help with the cost of the sewer treatment plants. So he's putting in 70 units with two bedrooms each. So he can pay up front to connect initially, or he can pay, I mean, I'm fine if he pays and build as he builds out. But you don't see that there's, there are two different things? I do, but I don't feel that we should reduce the rates because well, the, the cost of the sewer treatment plant, maintaining the sewer treatment plant, that is a public expense. It, and the whole purpose of the fees was to offset the cost of doing business at the sewer treatment plant, the, the capital expenses. So he's hooking up 70 units with two bedrooms each. He right. needs to offset the capital expense of the operation of the sewer treatment plants. And, and that's why I don't want to entertain changing the fees until we figure out what we're actually doing at the sewer treatment plant. The, a lot, a lot of thought was put into that. And also, it was a lot of across the state. What is people charging across the state? So you will find that our charges are not, um, they're pretty much in the middle across the state. So, I, I mean, it, we, I, we did time for this. I... I I know, uh, but we cannot, way. we cannot continue to subsidize. No, stuff. It's, it's not subsidizing it. It's we, it, we have look to at charge it. for really. You're the right. first person who's always talking about user fees. This is a user fee. I, I understand, on, but we got to collect money <laughs> to offset the cost of the sewer treatment plant. I, I understand what you're saying, but there was a. I, I did something in town where. You know, there wasn't sewer involved, there was water involved. So I had to pay out of my pocket to extend the water line, you know, for mm -hmm. you know, a thousand feet. When I connected to those, I didn't pay a connection fee to every pipe I went, I paid a connection to that main. And then all of those lines were Well, then you got to bargain. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. I, uh, we have to charge for stuff. I, I'm not That's saying not charge it. I'm just, I'm just saying that the, the method that you you propose I'm not, here sounds... I'm not saying it's perfect, but it was something we came up with because we had to do something for the sewer treatment plants. And, right. and we have to charge money. That's just, that's just the cost of doing business. I think that okay. you adopted this in anticipation of doing a natural basis. Yes, and, and, but, and we put, but we went to a, a huge extent of effort to try to come up with something that was fair and equitable and realistic for what other people in the state were doing. And is it a sticker shock to people around here who are used to getting free everything? Yes. But the fact is we have to start charging for sewer. You know that. 
I, I, I know what you're saying about it. So yeah. I, and I agree. I agree. But the, I don't want to change it. I mean, I'm not interested in changing it because we've got to collect money. And then when we figure out what we're doing for the sewer treatment plant, then we can alter. What, I mean, I would say that this is probably going to go up. So we, he should be happy we're locking into this because this is ultimately going to go up based on what we're going to be doing at the sewer treatment plant we will be saying it's going to be more expensive to hook up because of the stuff that we have to do. I think realistically this is going to double. And there's nothing we can do about it because it's, it's the expense of what's happening down there. I mean, how, how else are you going to fund it? Well, You've got to be realistic. You're, not, you're never going to fund it by new connections. You're, you're funding no, it by I know, the but user fees. Everything, everything is going to go up. And that's, this is... And that's why I don't want to question something that we did proactively a couple years ago. Come on. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is that it should be, it should be, it should be laid out in a manner where are you connecting to the sewer line for a use, or you add extending. Well, it's based the sewer on line. the number of bedrooms. So, okay. I, all right. I would gonna... I would give him the option of paying up front okay. for all 70 units, or which is 154,000, we'll take it in cash right now. I love it. But I, I think that's a little bit onerous, so if he wants to do pay as he builds out, that's fine too. But, I mean, with me, I, 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 you know, we should have this discussion as a board, because maybe Trevor I feels- I to discuss this, because I need to get back to him, because there was some discussion with him about um, installing, and I think I spoke with you about this. Yeah. Uh, Grinder. Grinders, yeah, grinders yeah. but I think no, we've I determined think, I, I, technologically I don't think that, that would doesn't be good, make sense. No. So, um, you know, I, want to let I, know. I mean, I, I don't know what Trevor will feel about it, but I, I think it's kind of onerous to ask someone to, to, to give us the fee up front. No, but, I, I, mean, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. So as he connects to it, I, I, the only part that I guess I'm not getting my point across, or you, you choose not to I'm see it. I'm choosing not, not to, to see it. Not to see it. Is that you... <laughs> Because you would pay. Hey, we're switching sides. I want to collect money, and you're saying no. Don't I, collect no, money. no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying yeah. not collect the money. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying <laughs> is that it. You should. You should separate them out so that we have a fee for extending the sewer line. You know, other than just going. I'm not saying it's not perfect, but okay. I, I would like to leave it until we figure out okay. what we're doing at the sewer treatment plant, and yeah. then, then. You can look at what we've done and say, how does this reflect where we are going with the sewer treatment plants, and then charge of appropriate hookup fees that would reflect what our expenses truly are. I mean, this, like I said, this is based on what's happening across the state. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's not out of line. No, and, and I, I did, I read through that the information I that I got from you the other day mm -hmm. about, you know, the average rates and stuff like that. And even with our increased rates, we're not even to the average of what the I state know. is anyway. So, so yep. uh, uh, okay, let's We're not on. undercharging, but no. on the okay. other hand. I just, I just want clarity yeah. before I went back to him on that. Okay. So, okay. okay. Um, transfer sticker and bag price. For 18, did Kevin have a um, yes. um, recommendation? Yes. The update on that is um, uh, that we charge um, ordered half bags. They won't be until the 18th, I think May 18th. Um, that we charge um, $25 a roll for the large bags, the and $17. This is basically a cost for the half bags for 10 um, in a roll. Um, that's what the costs end up being. We're not making any money on the half bags, and that was why originally we el eliminated the half bags. But uh, so, so many people. Less. Yeah, so many people had asked for. Kevin gets these bags. You don't know where. Um, waste zero. Waste zero. Okay, and a state contract. Yeah. I guess we've been getting it there for years. And he also recommended keeping, I believe the sticker price is $65, keeping that. So you need, you, this is recommendation there's, for you to adopt there's a, this. So. I don't know, there, there's a plastic place in North Carolina where I used to get eight gallon plastic bags that we used to line 
the votive boxes with, and I got 2,000 of them for $4. So the only added expense would be having Town of Deerfield printed on them so you can identify it, but it seems, it seems like a lot of money. But I can talk with him about where he gets it. Yeah, them. I was just gonna say, we ha remember we have to do this procurement stuff, but um, the well, ba main I, thing. I, not if it was under a certain dollar amount. No, yes. Um, what you, we, what we're gonna do. Yeah, just to check on that crisis. Uh, unfortunately, we, oh, here he is. Oh. Um, we have to set this, both the clerks, you know, treasurer's office. Um, um, Trevor, we are just talking about um, transfer station stickers. Um, Kevin piece. recommended six, keeping $65 for the sticker. Um, the large orange bags would stay at $25. The um, half bags are 17 which is cost. Okay, good. So we're not going to make any money on the... That's fine. And, and that's, that's what I just said. It's, we had, that's why we eliminated because there was no opportunity for us to make any... Um, it's the right money, thing to do but, for our seniors. But it, we have had so many requests, and I feel very yeah. badly. People are recycling more, so it's not just seniors. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I had a com couple conversations with that, but mostly I feel bad for seniors. So we're going to do the $17, if that's okay. I would agree completely. Sure. Okay. Yep. Is that good? I'm still going to talk with him and find out if oh, we yeah, can yeah, get yeah. No, but money. But if yeah. you, I need to get back to him. Yeah, so we'll make a vote. Um, I make a motion that the sti sticker $65, um, the, the big bags $25. Mm -hmm. And um, have a on it. no, no, I was and just looking, I was making some notes and it's okay. here. And I hardly Second. Lost it. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. None. I'm in favor. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. So you can tell Kevin that we're going to do that. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is Matthew Ainsworth to the, um, he was volunteering for the Conservation Commission, um, ending June 30th, 2017. So I make a motion to say thank you very much, Matthew, um, to, um, for the Conservation Commission to end, to fill the term that is a vacant. Oh, did you make a motion? Sorry. Yep. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, speaking of which, uh, the we have the warrant right here. Oh, good. I, could we, you just hand me that? I just I just want to make a statement about the I don't know three or four times there's been um, reference that we have sign you know the select board have now have a single warrant you, you know signature warrant we never um, not all three sign it. It, the, it's, it's critical that all three of us have eyes on the warrant, and it was only for an emergency. Like, say Trevor went was in Florida, and we had that storm. I couldn't get down my driveway. Kip can come in, and the payroll can go out, bills, so we do not get late fees, stuff like that, get done. But we 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 actually never have done that. So um, I just want to make it clear that we feel very strongly as a board that all three of us. Mm -hmm. I have eyes on the warrant, and we sign it, and it was only for an emergency thing. Yeah, it was not a regular. In case of emergency. Yeah, it was not a regular practice. It's not a way to avoid scrutiny. It, yeah, absolutely. nobody, yeah, nobody was trying to avoid keep anything. It, so that's just wanted to clarify that to yeah. the town, and out, hopefully people listening will understand. Because that was brought up. And we can put that in the minutes, Pat, please, <laughs> that it was only for emergency purposes that a single signature warrant was a, was able to go forward, okay? Um, it was our intention. Um, new business, FERCOG um, contract for assistance with green communities work. They've been, and through Pat Smith, um, has been working with the Energy Committee uh, to help us get our, um, our green communities reporting back in order. It's very, very tough detailed mm. stuff. And the, town had gotten behind um, a couple of years, which means we couldn't uh, apply for anything. Um, we're getting up to date with that. They've gotten additional technical assistance money to provide services to the towns that ha are green communities, and this would simply extend that agreement. Um, they'd help us with grant applications, procuring uh, activities for approved grant-funded projects, 
and assist, continue to assist with the annual grant preparation. So. I wonder why the state's broken. So the state <clears throat> makes us, gives us money to hire somebody to do paperwork for the state so they can approve that we participate in the green communities so they can give us more money. Wow. Well, I think <laughs> what happened is I remember when green communities came around, it must have been it was know, too, it's too complicated ago, something with like no that. staff. And when I was here last time as the interim, it was extraordinarily complicated. It is. It's too complicated with and no staff. And they found, I think, that towns were having such a difficult time to comply. And I don't know why they made it so complicated, frankly. I don't know if it has to do with federal funding that comes to the state, that comes to us. I, um, and and it, it, in order to, you know, these smaller communities particularly don't have the staff are the resources we have to no spend staff. on this. I mean, who, who can do so this? And so they, they are, you know, this just started a couple of years ago, I think. So, amazing. yeah, I know. Amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I know. How can we this do is, this? This is the it's, meeting yeah. that we went oh. okay. to today. I'm gonna oh. So right. if, if, you, if you approve okay. of this. Um, Wendy's going to schmooze it. Okay. So yeah. we're okay. just approving I that. sign it on your that behalf. The, we are. We'll approve this agreement to we contract with FERCOG, no cost to the town right. for this, those services I just... Just say yes. Make for the municipal motion. energy <laughs> coordination services. It's not going to cost us anything, and potentially we right. can insulate the church. So <laughs> we need to do you to say yes, okay? I, I, I'm not saying no. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. That's all. <laughs> um, okay, I... I I don't even know what to make a motion for. Cause Welcome I, to my world. <laughs> yeah. Um, I make a motion that we um, contract with the FERCOG for our assistance with green communities work that is paid for under our technical assistance money. Second. Uh, second. But it's paid for under our technical assistance no, it's, money? It's, no, it's, it's paid for through a grant. I thought, we, I thought it was part of our technical assistance money. No. It is technical assistance, but it's a different it's a funding source from the Department e Energy Office. No. Okay, so it's not our tax. It's, 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 it's not tax Te money. Technical assistance. I'm using that. Money. It's it is technical assistance money, but it's from the energy department, not our normal technical assistance right, but money. Right, the technical assistance money that we pay the for COG comes out of tax. No, 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 no. I, oh no, not that technical. We you <laughs> yes, all of the it is tax gives, money. The state is gives us yeah. technical question. assistance oh. money that we right. can apply for. But the the residents of Deerfield don't pay that. Oh, no, no, right. no, no, no. Okay, I get it. I this is a different pot of money from the Department yeah, yes. of Energy technical assistance, not our standard technical assistance money. It's a shell game I'll never get Could, used to. I talked about DLTA already, the, oh, you the did? Okay. economics, but I didn't know whether you're going to be back. I was no, I was going to back up to the to the transfers station stickers and bags. Oh. Do we, um, do we have a, um, a discount for seniors? Like a senior yes. citizen discount yes. on those? Yes. And that would stand in, regardless of the rates that we're placing, they would still have Well, on the, on the sticker, there's a discount. On yeah. the sticker, there's a discount, yeah. but I, not on I the I have bags. it in my office. Um, I, I'm sorry, oh. I'm forgetting what it is. Um, yeah. We, we don't. It's only what happened years. is, we, you know, a couple of years, a few years ago, yes, we, we right. got in it's a 40, real crunch. Forty-five money wise, money wise. and we and and so we decided to do away with the half bags because they were. I mean, they cost the same as your big bags, right. which so we seems kind of crazy. Take a loss on it a right. Bit. So we eliminated it to try to make this steering for station generate more mm -hmm. money. But it is really onerous for especially older people. So. What we want to do is bring back the, and that's that would help. And that's we're so we're just we're doing it at cost. At There's, cost, and then so, but there would still be a discount on the sticker for seniors. Yes. Okay. It's um, forty-five yeah. dollars apparently. Sixty-five six, for. So it's a twenty dollars. Yeah. So. Discount. Okay. I mean, Hampton, we can't we, we can't have that as a needs base. Right. That's right. You have to cover yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. No, that's oh. fine. I just want to make sure that. It it, it just oh, unfortunately there's. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but Kip said that he maybe he can figure out some place else so we can get get bags. bags. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Um, okay. So upcoming, we have no pub, nobody here no for program. public comment. Exec, no executive Your session. session. So upcoming meetings is May tenth, May seventeenth, and May thirty first. Cool. Um, the Franklin County Opioid Opioid Task Force is meeting here. Oh, good. Um, on the eighteenth, six to eight thirty. Nice. And uh, they're having forums. Um, it's not the whole task force. We ran into one of the members yeah. today. Okay. Um, but they're having forums around the county. 
Uh, Great. It will be here. Wonderful. And so we encourage people hosted, to come. Yes, please we come. We just hosted yeah. an energy regional group last night, mm -hmm. last week, and I do want to bring this up, actually. Um, the FRTA, which is changing some of its bus routes, or proposing to do so, had a meeting here. Bob Decker is our representative to the okay. FRTA, and he asked me to bring this to the board to check in because uh, it's affecting the bus route, and they are talking about not um, stopping at um, uh, Pelican and the regional school, or they're changing the, the schedule for that. They're limiting it to the times, which sort of made sense. But um, I don't remember exactly how this affects things, but the, the North uh, Main Street Bridge, mm -hmm. um, he was asking me to ask you to please find out and pressure to move that project along because it will affect the, it affects the bus. Because the bus is too heavy. They'll go over, right. So well, I don't I, know where I, it is on the list. I do know. Um, we get conflicting information. I mean, we had information on it and they were just going to shut it down and not do anything for a while. Is and it, it was like. Is this on the tip? Yeah. No, the it's, it's not even on the it's tip. It's a separate. Th okay. Yeah. Because it's a railroad. It's a railroad, right? so it's, it's a railroad. Oh. So it's, it's just, I don't know what they're going to do. But we it's we a need state to state bridge, though. Yeah. We need to we need to follow up on that because but this is that's really what he asked. yeah. But let me isn't it's I believe that's a state bridge. We don't own it or have to pay. Oh no no we don't pay for it. But right. they they could be hokey pokey and yeah. take eons to get done. And this impacts all our it's business major, up and down. Business. And yeah. you know. Uh, having no, up, having no buses town. coming through and everything what else. Was, what previous efforts have there been by your board to well, we, write letters or anything? Or would you like what would you like me to do relative to this? Well, I, I think we need to track down we which protest, list though. it's on. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> we need to track down which list it's on first and see, what we can do for and, and see yeah, um, because it's not on the no, normal TIF because that's a um, that's that's a railroad bridge. So we have to find out um, where it is on uh, the list, and uh, we need to find out the list right, because. Do we ask for COG or do we ask DOT? Um, Let's ask both. I, I'd call Maureen first yeah. up at the FERCOG and see what advice she has okay. on where we can locate the list for. And then we have to figure out a leverage, some somehow to leverage something. So if they need a permit for something or whatever, no issuing of permits until they move well, us up or something. <clears throat> I've got two videos on here that I just happen to be going down North Main Street. I keep my phone there, of two tractor trailer trucks going over that bridge. If we had a cop station there, with the, the amount of dollars that we could generate in fines. <laughs> I'm always seeing them. I'm always seeing Does them, Does it yeah. say load oh, limit? And oh, yeah. Load oh, limit. Yeah. yeah, this guy was... Well, you're I, talking I, to him about this, patrolling up at the landfill, I mean, the transfer this, station. The, you can also the bring this for, up. The ticket for going over that bridge with this truck would probably be, you know, anywhere between $2,500 and $3,200. Really? Oh, yeah. It's wow. Huge. I would also think, would Pelican oh, yeah. have an interest It's huge. In this? Yes, they probably could write a letter of support. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, this is having an impact on us. On oh, yeah. Pelican could write a letter mm -hmm. saying that it's impacting their business. The schools, and maybe? In the schools. School and bus, and how long has it been uh, posted? Um, for uh, almost six a year. Six months, maybe? Oh, that's all. A okay. little bit longer. Sorry. Yeah. It's been a while. We've got so many bridges and yeah. dams. I know. And it's just, of, but it's 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 railroad, and so it's different than. It's too bad it's yeah, not a river the, under well, it. It's, it's railroad, 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 but it's public way. Over. That's right. Mass DOT owns it now. MSDOT. They were wonderful. I mean, right? Ooh, with his, yeah, I was going to say, it's too bad there's not a river under it. They could fix it in about two months. They were so good. I wonder if maybe that we could was, just that was reach a lot out. Of work, though. Oh, I know it was. They Kevin were, did an amazing uh, They job. just did a huge job on that. All um, Kevin, everybody. I hardly made any phone calls. It, it was, was awesome. Kevin All right, I'll follow up and see what we can do. But yeah. you yeah. are interested. I just want to get the background and let you know. Yeah, we need to follow up on that because mm -hmm. you know what? Okay. No, if we'll if there's many that. violations like that, yeah, we could oh, fund I'll, our police I'll bet department. It happens two or three times a day. But if we start giving tickets, that's a huge impact on our local businesses, and mm. we need to find out where well, those trucks are. Those trucks going to Pelican? Yeah, they, he, I, he pulled to, out for yeah. me. He came out of Pelican, and I have his plate. I have, I have, yeah, I took a video, so I have his. Uh, well, yeah. we have to balance. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you don't want you don't want to make. 
You don't want to make problems for our right. businesses. No. Well, I mean, we he has the driver of that truck has to pass three signs that says it's, it's, That's you know. like the bridge that eats trucks in Northampton. <laughs> well, what, what we need Nobody to do, when you talk to Maureen, tell her we're having violations, like yep. constant violations, and we can't, we don't have the police, enough police to enforce the, the bridge, you know. My buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, we can come up with Most some kind of story. Number? Well, why don't you give that to John? I'm That's, going to. Okay. Maybe we can collect $3,200, and that will pay for Wendy's time to chase He's even got his address on it. I mean, how much easier does it get? Chase down the thing. And then we can go have a party because it only takes one signature to go buy pizza. <laughs> All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next